You are Locked On Auburn, your daily podcast on the Auburn Tigers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, welcome on into Locked On Auburn, your daily Auburn Tigers podcast. I'm your host, Zach Blackerby, and thank you for making Locked On Auburn your first listen every single day. Joining us as he does every Tuesday, Charlie Five, Auburn message board legend. Yes. What a disaster Saturday was. An absolute catastrophe. It was a, that was pretty rough. That was pretty rough. Your, your tweet, uh, which one of the three points was your favorite was absolutely hilarious. Uh, that's the only thing that brought me, brought me through the day. That was the only thing that got me through the day. Yeah. There was some good, uh, there was some good responses. Some people said the first of Auburn's three points was the best because it eliminated the, the shutout. Like, okay, that makes sense. Good point. Some people said the third one because it gave them something to hold on to. <laughs> <laughs> I said that my favorite was the three that we almost had that one time, and then we didn't. It was Gosh. cool. It was like a tease. So, Anders is like – he's missed five field goals this year. I didn't realize that until uh, Lindsay and I were looking at it this morning. And it's I've like, hit that – let me tell you something. That one he missed, I've hit that golf shot a lot of times. A lot of times. It's a little a little, a little straightforward 120-yard yeah. uh, 100, wedge shot, and you just kind of baby it and leave it that way out right. I've done that. I do that often. That that was uh, – I could I saw my golf swing in that in that kick. It's uh, it's happening too much. It's happening a little too much. It, it is. It is. LSU, I just kind of forgot. That game, I, I mean, it was just so late. I don't even know if I was, like, conscious during the whole thing. So, yeah. that one, I'm like, okay, I forgot about that. That was, like, Georgia a year ago. State, like, everyone messed up in Georgia State. It's like, who? Yeah. Yo, if you're a kicker, how else are you going to mess up? You're going to miss a field goal. But then, like, Ole Miss, his brother was there. His brother was, like, the honorary, like, Mike man or whatever. And I blame Daniel for that. Yeah, I blame sure. I blame Daniel for that 100. percent So and then, if am I mistaken? Did he not yank the first uh, extra point of the year like out of the stadium, like completely, completely yanked it, barely got off the ground? Am I not I mean, mistaken? Very big. If you're gonna do something, whether it's right or not, do it all the way. He so, hit it. it was off the whole off the whole field. It was awful. Yeah, yeah. he's having a little. He's having a little um a rough rough year. Um, yeah. All right. So hopefully he gets that. Uh, he gets that taken care of. Bo Nix was not having a rough year. We were talking about how focused and how much she was having fun. And then Saturday rolled around and the offense yeah. scored three points. I mean, I, I still can't stress enough. Like that is such a low number. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost hard to do. <laughs> it's like, how did you only score three in college yeah. football today with all these rules and all this scheme benefiting the offense? How did that happen? And like, I, I don't know. Part of me is like, is it a perfect storm where it's like, okay, Auburn's shaky on the road, even though I thought we buried that storyline. A yeah. and M had a bye week. A uh, and M out talents us at a lot of different positions, but it's just like I don't know. I, I would say it was a more it was a it was a worse performance than it was against Georgia, and and not just from a not from a um not necessarily from a uh, point standpoint because obviously we scored more points against Georgia sure. barely. But I just felt like even that there was there was plays there to be executed, and it was like it was like there was there was nothing open. When there's something open, we couldn't execute. Uh, we couldn't put multiple plays together. Uh, every single drive, it would it would end in like third and beyond six or seven. Uh, it was just like there was nothing really that could get going. And when there was momentum, there would be a costly. Uh, you know, drop or a costly uh, tackle for loss or a penalty or something like that. It was just – and I completely, completely uh, underrated how good their defensive front was. It was like they had five or six uh, – they were rotating dudes all night and they they all looked exactly the same. They were all like 6'5", 280-plus athletic mm -hmm. freaks. And, uh, in fact, I mean, it was – their defensive well, front is absolutely impressive. And I'm cool with like if some dude just beats Nick Brahms, like I, I, I that happens. I get it. And Auburn just flat out beats dudes, right? It's the amount of time Saturday where no one touched a dude. Yeah, that was rushing. That's the stuff that really just is like okay, week one or week two, early in the season, post Penn State against Georgia State. It's like okay, at this point of the year, that should not be happening, and it did. It happened yeah, a bunch. Well, well, I mean, the very first drive of the game, uh, the very first drive of the game, you know, we, we strung together a couple of first downs and had a little bit of momentum going. We got in like a third and six 
they rushed three. Yep. They rushed three and got to Bo, and it and it and it was it was the the center was pushed almost all the way into Bo's lap. There was really there was literally nowhere to go. Like it was, you know, a lot of times he can escape stuff like that sometimes, but this was like it it was coming so hard right up into his face. Well, There's it was no, so early in the play too. Yeah, like there was nowhere you know, to go. When Bo's back there for a second, then stuff starts to break down. Then he can kind of move around. But when it's instant, like when With three I mean, guys, it rushed three, rushed three and got some. It's not a great thing. And not there were bad. dudes. I've seen people draw up this play a few times throughout the week already. I mean, there were guys open. Like Bobo got dudes open. It's just there's so much that goes into having a successful play offensively. Yeah. And I think for the most part, on most of those plays, all but one or two of those things had to happen. Like either the blocking would be good and the receiver couldn't get open, you know, couldn't create space or the blocking would be good. The receiver would get open, then he wouldn't catch it or those things would happen and Bo missed or, it. Or, uh, you know, Bo would, uh, there would be a guy open, Bo would see him and go and there was a time a uh, Bo goes to throw it and the, as, as he's back here about to rip it to him, the ball gets knocked out of his hand or, you know, we run a rock that we run a play and, and Bo throws it too low into the, uh, you know, into the ground. Right. Um, I mean, Orbo it was just, just Orbo just drops it. Yeah. Drops exactly. it and it's like, here, if you can score more than the offense will score today. There you go. Yeah. I there mean, it was, uh, it was a Not complete, great. complete catastrophe. Uh, and it's, uh, I don't know. It was, it was, it was bad. It was bad. And then we couldn't, <laughs> couldn't call our way out of it either. It was, it was, it was just that bad. No. And I mean, Lindsay and I talked about this yesterday a little bit. Like, was the game plan terrible? I don't think so. I mean, it, it was really kind of hard to tell at times. It really just was. Yeah. It was so broken. Um, but I know execution was bad. I assume the game plan wasn't great just because you scored three points. But um, I, I don't know. Is, is, are the issues that happened Saturday, are they still going to be a concern against Mississippi State? Mississippi State's defense is not bad. Um, you know, there's all this talk about Mike Leach and and the air raid, but like Mississippi State's defense for the last two seasons has been fine. Last year they were really good defensively. I think the I think the defense, uh, their defense is going to be a lot like uh, LSU uh, that we faced this year. I think they got athletes that can get to the uh, they can rush the passer, they can create havoc, but they're not a very consistent like it's not a consistent force like Texas AM and where it's like you literally you're on they're on you they're gonna they're gonna try to scheme different ways to get after you whereas Texas a m can literally just line up four and just punch you right in the face and there's nothing right. you can do about it so yeah I do think they're gonna have it's gonna be like I mean to me they're like a lot like the Arkansas the LSUs that we face and I, I mean at home too I, I, I I'm not I'm not super duper intimidated by by their defense, but heck, you never know. Once it it seems like once the the wheels start falling off, there's no there's no getting it back on. Yeah, I mean, once Bo looked lost out there, it's just really hard to snap him back into it. And so, what does that look like from a game to game perspective? We haven't seen that yet. I guess we have. I guess we have seen that. He got, he literally got benched against Georgia State, yeah. and he came back and it, it worked out. Is this a similar scenario? I mean, this is almost more embarrassing. Going and scoring three points, like that's almost worse. It it it, it is. Uh, it is. I looked at the game flow. Like you look at the game flow, though. The difference was Georgia State. The Georgia State game um, was completely slipping away. Like it was completely slipping away a lot early. I felt like we were really in that game until the second series the second series of the third quarter, which was midway through the third quarter. Um, it was back and forth, but, you know, both defenses were standing their ground. Both defenses were, uh, yeah. you know, making it happen. Uh, we come out, uh, we, we stop them right out of the, uh, the first drive of the third quarter. We go right down the field. Bo goes three for three, throws a beautiful back shoulder to the tight end. He throws uh, the very first play. He rips one uh, to the, to the, to the boundary, uh, he throws a back shoulder to the tight end, and they run a little play action. We get all the way down to like the seventeen. We we kept trying to call. There were several times. I don't know if we, we got a uh, illegal man downfield once. We got an, we should have got it. Twice. We should have gotten it more than once. Yeah, we should have gotten it twice. Um, and then we ran that play again. We really tried to work this. It was something like an RPO that he would run to the wide side of the field, uh, and 
and it never worked out. We ran that again. He had to throw it away. And then he throws a beautiful fade to Kobe. And bless his heart, Kobe just literally lost all spatial awareness and had no idea. The ball almost hit him. I mean, the ball literally yeah. almost hit him in, in the hip. It was and, – and then you got to kick a field goal, and you missed the field goal. And then it was like from then on, the spiral hit, and we could not – and, and I'm, I, have, I have no problem saying it. This is when Bad Bo came out. Mm-hmm. And there was no getting up. There was no getting around it. There was right. nothing that could be done. And uh, that that it's it's kind of scary to see how that flip switch can flip on him. Um, it happened like so that. fast. It happened like that. We're in the game, uh, and then all had a good drive, and then all of a sudden the fumble came. And you know. He he did fumble the ball. The, the, are, you the, to, are you defending the fumble right now? No, no, no. The flea flicker was terrible. The flea flicker was terrible. The the second fumble, he did drop it untouched, but that dude was literally on him immediately. Like he was there immediately. If you watch that, he he to, he he didn't have any time to 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 do anything because the guy was on him you in his face. In a game where one point means you so much. No, you I'm not saying that. you you cannot fumble. You cannot fumble. But it's it. We're, we're let's don't pretend that it was just like I'm just back there by myself and I just dropped the ball. Like it was another, uh, it was another completely blown block where a guy was in Bo's face immediately and he just dropped he just dropped the ball and and then it right. was and then it was just over and he got he hey he got tattooed too they tattooed him yeah. on, <laughs> once the dude picked up the ball uh, it was right. uh, and then it was spot then it was just spiral city after that it was spi- balls were sailing. Yeah, he threw it. We had a screen set up on the next drive to to Hunter. Uh, he probably would still be running, and he threw it. He threw a laser. Uh, it it was just it not not catchable. Throw balls in the ground. I mean, it was it was definitely bad bow. And I and I have I mean I have no problem saying it at all. You know what makes things better? Please tell me. Is it frisky whiskey? It's frisky whiskey. Yes, it always frisky does. Frisky whiskey has given us hats to give away. Look at these bad. If you're watching on the YouTube, if you're on podcast, uh, just imagine, you know, these incredible, beautiful hats. If you want one of these on the YouTube channel, on this video, comment your score prediction for Auburn and Mississippi State this weekend. And also let us know if you want a blue one or a, a, uh, I guess a tan one. But yeah, Frisky not- Whiskey, um, it is the best place to buy all of your, uh, whether it's your your liquor, alcohol, spirits, whatever it may be, they've got it. Also have lottery tickets if you're in that sort of thing. Just type in Frisky Whiskey. It's about 15 or 20 minutes um, from the Auburn, Opelika, Lee County area. If you're coming in to town from Georgia and you're on I-85, it'll be right before you cross over that state line into Alabama. Be sure to check it out. We love our friends at Frisky Whiskey. And, uh, yeah, I know folks uh, in the Locked on Auburn Discord, they're all about Frisky Whiskey as well, which I am a fan of. So, yeah, check out Frisky Whiskey, our good friends there. Also, today's show brought to you by Prize Picks. Charlie Five, we all know that Prize Picks uh, is daily fantasy made easy. Do you know what has popped up now in the app this week? What's that? College basketball. Ooh, baby. I'm, <laughs> hey, I, got, I, I locked in some Prize Picks over the weekend. Did you really? Yeah, it was pretty fun. It's actually really fun. Did you do it on the app or the uh, the the? Website? I did the desktop. The desktop's like really super easy, super easy to use. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love the app as well. But yeah, you can do head to head fantasy, or you can just kind of do different props, whatever it may be. Uh, they've got a lot of fun stuff. So check out PrizePicks.com. Use promo code Locked On to get a a deposit match of what up to one hundred dollars. Just use promo code Locked On, or you can go to your app store today. Prize Picks is daily fantasy made easy. So anytime Auburn loses to Texas A&M or Alabama or LSU, whenever this happens, it happened under Gus as well. We always did have the self-reflection of, wow, we really got pushed around, especially in the trenches. How are we going to get more talent than these other teams that are like, you know, recruiting in the top five every year? And you cover recruiting way closer than I do. I want to talk about this first in the short-term realm and then in the long-term realm. Yeah. Short-term... I'm not too worried about it, not near as much as other people are, because I really think the transfer portal is going to change the game and benefit a team like Auburn. I think we saw yeah. this last year. I think as Harsty gets more experience with it, as well as um, more and more players kind of realize, okay, I could be a really good you know, group of five player, or I can go to Auburn and, and start. I, I, I think you're going to get more and more of those type of guys that are going to benefit 
a school like Auburn that's just out of probably that top tier, that's probably like in that second tier of, of football programs. And I think Auburn's going to benefit from it. So short term, I'm not too worried about it. Long term, Charlie Five, at some point, you've got you to wean know, yourself off of it. Right. right. <laughs> yeah. and, and you want you want to start a guy when he becomes a junior and you know he was a four star, you know, offensive guard a that few you years. develop doing yeah. the way, things the way you want it to be done. Right. Right. And you want to make that sales pitch, you can get these guys in the league, you know, day one and, and all of that. So short term, I wouldn't care if Auburn had 15 guys and then they signed 10 guys in the transfer portal. Yeah. Portal it up. I'm not worried about that at all. But long term, you, you want to see more of it. So uh, what are your thoughts on this? Well, so last year was the first year that was the they, they passed the whole immediate eligibility thing. And I think a lot of people, uh, it was it was popular. The, the portal was popular. But I think after the last games of the season, the portal will be become more – like it will just absolutely explode. I think the because people saw how it worked last year, there's a lot of guys that came uh, – there that you're seeing – through the portal, play at other schools and having success this year, uh, I think you're going to see the portal absolutely explode. So um, if you have to do a rebuild, I think Auburn, I'm, I'm with you, you have the best pitch that you possibly can. I mean, we literally don't have I'm, – I'm not being ugly when I say this, but we literally do not have an offensive lineman. I don't believe that could start for the top – five or six teams in the SEC. And and you see what Texas A&M did. You know, everybody made fun of Jimbo. Everybody made fun of Jimbo. Oh, Jimbo can't do it. He did it. He did it the right way, just like the the Sabins, the Kirbys. You start in the trenches. You absolutely build up. And he has absolutely a, a freakish defensive line. And he started a couple of freshmen against us and a highly rated freshman. And, you know, I, I one guy out of the portal, I believe, and they – He's building it. You got to build the trenches. And the good the good news is, like you said, I think that uh, the portal will be very enticing for a lot more players than it was last year because they had they got a chance to sit back and watch it. Auburn's got a great sales pitch. Um, how aggressive are we going to be with it? You know, sometimes I feel like we drag our feet a little bit. Um, I, I feel like there were some guys maybe last year, you know, like a Wanya Morris or somebody like that, you know, from Tennessee. There were some guys that maybe we we – we, uh, you know, we're trying to uh, super duper evaluate way and, and just kind of drug our feet a little bit. How aggressive we're going to be? You're going to have to because it's going to be like a feeding frenzy when these guys hit. Um, so you, you, go ahead. I mean, we were all shocked when there were no offensive linemen that, that we picked up no offensive linemen in the transfer portal. Really, the only offensive player that's playing is Demetrius Robertson because Finley's right. played in you know one relevant game. So the the whole preparing for the future thing name the players on this roster offensive line wise that you would feel comfortable starting next year that'll be eligible to play you know i don't know i don't know that i would be comfortable if any of them started next year who who would you start i mean i, I don't know of any right now that i'm like okay if we put if if he can come back and he can play you know we can build around this guy like i mean i love all of them uh, don't get me wrong. Like, I, I really do, but they're just – Who just, all can come back? Keandre can come back, right? Keandre is probably the one guy that I, I would think would have a chance to, uh, you know – Council's gone. Council's gone. Council's gone. Like gone. For Delta or something. Yeah. Um, you're going to have uh, Z- Zaire, uh, Brendan Coffey. Those guys are going to come back. Uh, and then you got some of your younger – I could talk myself into Zaire. I think I could talk myself into him. You got some younger guys like, you know – Garner Langlo. Uh, Garner Langlo. Um, uh, your your the, the Tate Johnson, Avery Jernigan, those guys that uh, you know they're probably all interior guys. They're all guards. Um, they're all guards. Um, no no real promise at tackle at all on this roster Nick, moving forward. Um, so it should be a very enticing sales pitch, I would think. Should be an easy. I also sale. thought that last year, and it just didn't happen. But did we? Yeah. Did we want tackles? They may have felt good with those guys. They may have gone through spring and liked those guys. It's very possible. It's very possible. And now, but now, now you you've seen it uh, versus instead of just you versus your own guys, ones on ones, or you actually have seen your guys play in, against 
a vast array of talent levels of defensive lines and you've seen how they perform. And to me, that's got to be number one. And then receivers got to be number two. You got to figure out something. You got to find uh, some more consistent playmakers at receiver for sure. Do you think that extra year of growth at the receiver position will be okay though? Because we, we already got that extra year of growth with the lineman. It didn't work. Right. Um, but I don't know for if we some guys, seen they, it not work with, with Shedrick Jackson. I mean, the argument going into the season was like, well, he's always been hurt, but now it's like, you know, he can't stand up. Like he cannot yeah. finish a play without falling down. It's Kobe, another, it's like, maybe, maybe. Jekyll and Hyde. Co yeah. Kobe, Kobe looks like, sometimes he can look like a, a number one wide receiver. And then sometimes he just looks like he's a, a guy that played quarterback in high school. Mm -hmm. I mean, he, it, 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 it's, it's no, there's no real consistency. Kobe could be a guy, maybe that another year, uh, in more repetitions, he could right. be, he could be a playmaker. But I just, you gotta. I mean, you gotta. We gotta. We can't just throw to the tight ends every single play. Maybe we need to start doing that. Maybe we just need to put all tight ends out, out I there. Mean, would it be worse than what we saw Sat? Like, would we score more than three points? Like, I think so. I don't know. Like, Javaris Johnson, can he take that step? That's all we heard about all spring was Javaris Johnson. This Javaris Johnson that, and he's that never been. Out. He's not a big drops guy. Like I don't feel like we necessarily worry about him dropping the ball. It's just yeah. for whatever reason he can't. He's never open, or either yeah. we can't find him when he is open. I, it's it's tough. so. I was super against the narrative of like questioning what's the deal with the whole like Elijah Canyon not getting on the field, and yeah. early on it was like where's Capers? We're seeing a little bit more of Capers, but I'm there now. I'm like. What is he doing or not doing where he, he – you're telling me he can't do this? Like, you're telling me he's worse? I just, like, I, I don't believe it. You know what I mean? There's got to be something else going on there. I agree. I agree. Because I, – and I've said this before in multiple arguments, uh, more multiple conversations. Um, it seems so – it seems so, you know, easy to us. But, like, they don't want to lose – like the coaches don't want to lose. Like they don't want to not perform. They don't want to go out there and score three points. Like it's not like they have this agenda that I've got to play these certain kids. They're playing who they think give them the best chance to some win. Some people legitimately believe that, Charlie. And some people. I mean, some, some people, people believe it to their like their 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 soul. But but I mean. It's like, I must it's, start Bo Nix. I would rather start Bo Nix than lose. Like there are legitimate people out there that believe that that's a thing. That, oh yeah, 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 absolutely, absolutely. But the thing is, like this arg, these arguments are nothing different than, you know, I got, I got, I kind of got, I laughed a little bit. It's, it's like if you don't think Bo, Bo should sit, or you don't think we should sit players, you're not thinking critically. This is that's literally the, the easiest argument that's been had since like the beginning of football. You know, I can go, I can go back as far as Daniel Cobb and, and Jason Campbell. Uh, then we move to the next ones, and it's. Uh, then it's uh, Brandon Cox and Cody uh, Cody Burns. Remember that that whole controversy. Yeah. Then after that, it's like we don't want to uh, we don't want to start Ben Tate. We want to start uh, Tristan Davis because he ran a four three, and everybody's thinking we're just we're just uh, you know trying to keep Tristan Davis out instead of you know playing Ben Tate. Then you go Jer uh, Nick Marshall in 2014. People wanted to start Jeremy Johnson. Then you go to uh, after 2015. People didn't want Jeremy Johnson. They wanted Bo uh, Sean White. Uh, I mean, it's like. It's 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 the same argument. Just it's the same thing. It's 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 the easiest argument to make because here's the thing: you can never be proven wrong. Mm -hmm. That's number one. You can never be proven wrong because if they don't play them, then you're then you then you uh, well we should have played them. You can, you can never always have that card in your hand. You, you can yeah. always have that card in your hand. If they do play them and succeed, you're you're a genius. Even though you've said it for the past you know hundred years, just in a different player each each single time. Uh, and then if they play him and they don't succeed, you can say, well, he hasn't gotten all the opportunities. Like it's this, it, it's, it's, I, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm sure every school has it, but it's like the, the coaches don't want to lose the, that, that, let me tell you something that dro drives Mike Bobo and Brian Harson insane that they only scored three points. And I guarantee I, they, they didn't sleep. They, they did not sleep. There's that is, there's no way those guys as competitive as they are, that was sat. That was satisfactory, and they're like, "Well, at least we played the guys that we were we were supposed to play." Yeah, at least we played Bo Nix and Chedrick Jackson. That's great. Yeah, that's yeah. great. I mean, come on. 
Hey, today's show brought to you by our good friends at betonline.ag. They have Auburn as um, minus five and a half on Saturday against Mississippi State. You like that? I'm not giving any more betting advice. I'm out of the betting. Fair enough. If you feel passionate about that one way or the other, go to betonline.ag. Uh, they're your uh, number one spot to bet on all uh, football and basketball action this season. Um, <laughs> you make your deposit, use promo code locked on to receive that 50% welcome bonus. Bet online where the game starts. Charlie, five, a few minutes left in today's show, and you kind of raised the question Does Auburn have any receivers or any offensive linemen that would start in the top four or five SEC schools? So we'll say for Alabama, we'll say for AM and for Georgia, and I, don't I think it's actually a big drop off after that. Cause like if you say Ole Miss or LSU, I'm like, yeah, I think, I think they do. Sure. So, I mean, so for your top three though, uh, which Auburn will have to play every year. I don't think so. I no. don't think they do. Unless it's a, like a gadget guy, like does Shivers get snaps in some, well, well, I guess, I guess we said linemen or receivers. Like does a Malcolm Johnson jr. Have a role. Maybe. Or a Javarius Johnson. I mean, I don't. I don't know. I really don't know. I. I, I don't. I, on the offensive line, the only guy that could probably even sniff it, maybe, would be Keandre Jones. Um, and it probably wouldn't be this year. It may be down the line because I think he's got a little bit of promise. Uh, yeah. And then wide receiver. Um, I'm definitely not Alabama. Um, I mean, Demetrius was like the starter at Georgia. Then he like got phased out, and he's like the exactly. third or fourth guy. So I. I don't. No, can't I mean, say that, him. You can't say him. He's our best guy. Right, right. So, yeah, that's that's that's. I mean, if that's where you want to, if that's where you want to be, if that's where we want to be, that's uh, that is a. If you look at that and, and answer that question, um, <laughs> that that it, it's a it's a very sombering answer, a very sombering answer. How quick can you fix that? The transfer portal, I think, allows it to be a little bit quicker. Yeah, but I mean, maybe. Do you get tackles, and how long do you have your tackles for? But right. at some point, it's like you're gonna have to actually fix the issue. And the you're issue gonna is- have to you're gonna have to recruit better and develop. And, and again, we're only one year in. We're only one year in, so maybe, maybe there's this. Maybe once there's this, you know, once you see the results, there's these this this plan that he can put in place. Uh, for de- for development moving further, but like receivers, man, receiving catching is a is a is pretty much a god given ability. Like you can you can only do so many drills to improve catching. Like you kind of are what you are uh, at, when when you are when you're receiving. So it's like, what do they do? Be- what what do they do best that allows them to, you know, like what type of balls do they catch the easiest? Basically, and you and then yeah, you and, have to scheme around that. And I'm seeing more from the receivers than I was pre harson because yeah. guys can get open now. And like, that's the hard part. The hard part is getting open. I remember having Gene Chizik used to come on, uh, on my radio show once a week. And when we would talk about Auburn doing all these drops, he's like, you know, once you get up, like getting open is the hard part. It's your job, but it's the hardest part of your job is to get open. And right. like the, the catch is the, the, the cherry on top. That's the fun part. Uh, I just he said that he said that over and over and over again when we talked about Auburn's drop issues, and so that just always kind of stuck with me. But yeah, it's like oh, we don't want to do the fun part. Our receivers don't want to do the fun part, and yeah. it's so. And, and I knew I knew it wasn't rational to feel this way, but it seemed like after the last few weeks post Georgia, it's like they fixed it. It's been fixed. Yeah. It's done. We don't have to deal with that anymore. And it's like, you know, these are, these are still the same guys. You're not going to fix that. And, you know, once the season starts, it's probably a little windows, too late. When windows it. tighten up, the clock starts ticking a little bit faster. It changes a lot of things. And yep. uh, and we're just not there yet. We're just not there yet. Uh, That's okay. And it's it, that, was a, <laughs> that was a very exposing game on Saturday, Ooh. for sure. We were exposed. But fortunately, I, I I don't think Auburn will be in, in that type of situation again, just because there's not another defense like that that they'll play. Right, I agree. I agree. Uh, there, you know, other and, and than, you're at home. Yeah, your, two of your last three games, your two toughest games left in your schedule are at home. Absolutely, absolutely. Any concern that South Carolina ran all over Florida? Any concern there whatsoever? No, I don't have any concern there. I do have concern. They do have a giant 
mean nose tackle. I don't know. His, I don't. I can't think of his name off the top of it, of, of my hand of of my head. But I worry about him versus Nick Brahms. Can Sweet Nick Brahms? Can that on the road cause issues, and then we possibly get spiral out of control? You know, Bo out there, and um, got it. Hopefully not. Hopefully not. Hopefully not is right. Charlie Five, where can people find you and hear you and all that good stuff? You can find me on Twitter at the underscore Charlie underscore five. Auburn Live, uh, the corner message board, or 247 Sports Body Get Aboard, or Monday through Friday on the Dad Bod Golf Pod. You guys are absolutely killing it there. The best daily golf podcast, Dad Bod Golf Pod. Be sure to check them out. Hey, if you missed it, check out our weekly Auburn basketball show as you get ready for Tuesday night's matchup and beyond. Zep Jasper joins me, and I kind of give my thoughts on the upcoming basketball season as well as what I saw Friday night in their exhibition game. That drops every Monday at 6 o'clock, both on YouTube and on the Locked on Auburn podcast feed. So check that out. And tomorrow, a War Report Wednesday. Yes. You're listening to Locked on Auburn.